In today's video, we're going to be exploring a new way of how we can actually interact with our .NET Web APIs. We're going to be exploring a new terminal, which is going to leverage AI, and it's going to give us a lot of new functionalities that's going to make our life as developers much more easier and faster. The terminal that we're going to be exploring is called Warp. And I would like to thank Warp for sponsoring today's video. So let's explore it together. Warp is a modern AI powered terminal that is designed to enhance developer productivity through different range of functionalities that are actually built in into it. And this functionality ranges from AI to developer productivity to enhanced user experience to agent mode to different security and privacy implementation. Let's take a look at the AI tools that's actually available for us to use within Warp. So within Warp, we have something called agent mode. And what basically what agent mode does, it allows us to start any task, have a communication with an AI that's gonna allow us to solve our problem. And then we're gonna get the solution that we need to do. It's a quite handy feature if you wanna actually start exploring how to do something within our terminal. Like let's say, for example, we wanna generate SSH keys, we wanna connect to our ECS instance, we wanna connect to our function apps, we want to, for example, to create, connect our Kubernetes cluster, check all of the pods. We can start this workflow and we can actually understand how everything's happening by asking an AI and getting the results that we need out of it. It also utilizes natural language processing because basically the way we're gonna be interacting with it is basically just asking the normal questions and then from there as if we are searching on Google and we're gonna be exploring this in a bit more details once we actually get to it. Another aspect is gonna be the modern UI where basically it allows us to actually customize it in any way, shape or form that we want and we can have themes embedded in it, we can have our terminal the way we look, we can have the SH integrated directly in it, a lot of different customization capabilities is there. And one of the most interesting feature is having a code-like editor inside our terminal and we're gonna be exploring this when we create our .NET Web API. Another item that is really, really interesting and it's one of the big features that actually attracted me to this product, it is Warp Drive. It allows us to actually store the workflow that we create into a separate folders and we can actually refer back to them whenever we need to. We're going to be explore this and how we can actually test our API and how we can leverage Warp Drive there. And if we're working with a team, we can actually share that drive with our team. So basically we are sharing the same commands across all and allow us to accelerate the work of our teams. And there's a lot of different functionalities from search to secret actions to security features. But now it's time to actually start exploring the terminal itself and see how we can actually leverage it. So if we go to the warp terminal, this is what we're going to be seeing. So one last thing before we actually jump into the code itself and actually start exploring it, warp is available on Mac, Linux, and by February 26, 2025, it's going to be available on Windows as well. So now that's out of the way, let's start actually exploring it. So what I have here is I have already downloaded warp on my laptop and I have already navigated to a certain folder that our certain directory. So the first thing that we can see is actually different from another terminal is our command prompt for it, or basically where we input our commands in all the way lower. So if we take a look at iTerm, which is on this screen right here, we can see iTerm is basically all the way up, similar to all of the other uh, terminals. But with Warp, it's, it exists all the way at the bottom of the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two in the same screen so we can actually compare them. So what I have here is I have the two different terminals. So on the left hand side, I have Warp. On the right hand side, I have my iTerm2 terminal. And we're going to be seeing the different ways and we can compare them from that aspect. So let's say in my use case for today, what I want to do is I want to create a web API and then within this web API, I want to basically have a single controller that's going to allow me to get, I don't know, cars information. So let's see how we can actually achieve that. And the way that I want to approach this is by basically taking the way that I'm a new .NET developer and I don't really know where I need to start in order for me to do that. So if I'm using iTerm, what I need to do is basically I need to go to my web browser and from there, what I need to do basically is I need to actually search for something like how to create a .NET Web API. And basically I will get all of the things that I need to do in order for me to a different video, different resources. I can go to the Microsoft Learn website and I can get the information from there, which is all fine. And this is the way how we have done it for a long, long time. But what I wanna do right now is I wanna leverage stuff with Warp. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna, how can I create a .NET Web API. So as we can see here, as soon as I started to type within my normal language, which is basically natural language, I'm not typing any command, we can see it directly switched to Claude 3.7, which means switched to an AI model, which is actually directly connected to my terminal. And from there, if I click on enter, what it's doing right now is actually thinking in order for me to give me the answer that it needs. So here, for example, it's telling me that I need to have the .NET SDK available. So I'm going to say yes, I already have that in place. And then basically it's thinking and then it's telling me that uh, it actually can see that it has, I have 
.NET version 9.0.101 and now it's giving me the capabilities to check all of the different functionalities that .NET new list will provide me. So now it's checking everything and now it's telling me that in order for me to create a new NotPub API, I need to utilize this. And basically what I've done here is with a simple interactive prompt, it actually went and checked my request and directly through my terminal, I did not leave, I did not go to any web browser. It was able to directly give me that command that I needed. So I'm gonna click on enter now. And now basically what's happening is it's gonna take this and now it's gonna execute my command for me. And now we can see here, it's creating everything for me and it's showing me my project structure. And let's go back up. And we can see here I have my out of the box default structure for end.net web API, my controllers, my CS proj, as well my app setting, etc. And now if I see all of this, it now is telling me that everything is ready and it's giving me even a quick way to start up. So it tells me now I need to navigate to my web application and now I can run it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on escape to exit the AI mode. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip on LS. And now, as you can see here, I have my web API available which is the new application that i just created and if i navigate to it second thing here we can see that the way i can actually navigate directly is different so i'm going to choose this one and all i'm going to do is put .NET build and once i've done that we can see my application has built successfully and now if i put .NET run we can see it's now running on port 5228 so let's copy this and let's open it up in my web browser and i'm just gonna go forward slash open api forward slash v1.json and now we can see here that i have my full api spec for the new api that i just created okay great so now that i have this in place i'm just gonna close iterm for now i'm gonna mainly focus on this one here so now that I have done this, now you can see my application is running and everything is actually functioning the way it should inside my terminal. So now let's stop this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to open it up in Visual Studio Code. And as I can see here from Visual Studio Code, let me zoom in a bit. So as we can see here, it's a normal .NET Web API. I have my weather forecast controller. I have my program.cs and have everything that I need. So here what I have is basically I have one editor, which is going to be my Visual Studio Code to edit my code. And I have, on the other hand, my terminal, everything exists. So I'm going to show you a very neat feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my controllers and I'm going to type ls. So if you can see here, now I have my file available here. And what you can see, if I hover my, my mouse on top of it, it gives me like a line where I can actually click on like a hyperlink. Once I click on that, you have the option to open in Warp. So once I do that, what I have here is basically I have a full code editor that actually understands C Sharp. Because you can see here, we have the color coding, we have the name spaces, for example, we have the right spacing, and we have even the light structure. So what I can also do right now, similar to any of the other code editors, is I can choose wherever I want to add. So if I want, for example, directly to add here a logger, so what I can do, for example, I can say logger dot log information. I'm sure I'm going to type a, make a mistake here. And then I can say, for example, sample, and then I can close it. So basically what I have here is, I have the capabilities to directly jump anywhere that I want. So instead of freezing, I'm going to say cold or basically very freezing. very, And I can do whatever I want here directly within my terminal. So in the other ways that I can actually add a text within my terminal, which is the old ways. Now, if I close this, what I could have done, I could have put nano, for example, weather forecast, and I can open it again in nano. And once I open it up in nano, what I need to do is I need to go to the old way where basically I scroll down and I need to find everything that I need to do in order for me to change. Well, if you notice, my changes has not been reflected here because I did not save yet. But I just wanted to show you here, like I could not, for example, just choose anywhere in my mouse in order for me to edit the code. I need to basically use my keyboard keys in order for me to navigate to exactly what I want, which is not really modern, is it? But with the other, with the warp, capability i can directly do that from the terminal itself i can just choose i can even put command s and you can see the file now has been saved so now if i go back to the original one and back to my terminal i've been up in nano we can see it has directly been updated and if i put let's go back I put up a .NET build and as you can see here i have code completion for .NET, which is pretty cool let's see if my code is actually built you can see here i have an error which is basically because i had not put the log information correctly if i go back here open my weather forecast and if i type here log save it from here for example come back do the dot not build we can see it succeeded now if i go back to my terminal and we can see here it did not update so it's still pending from their side i need to for example open it again so i can say for example cd controllers i can put ls again we can see my file click on it open and warp and now we can see it has been updated successfully so we can see i have all of this directly implemented inside my terminal i didn't have to do to, to go to anywhere else where i can just 
through my terminal, implement whatever I need, which is pretty awesome. So now that I have done that, let's close this. We don't need, and I closed the wrong one. So I'm gonna navigate to where I was before, and I'm gonna go to my web API. Okay, great. So now that I am here, and we're actually able to see how we can actually edit code directly inside my terminal. And one more thing, when trying to edit code inside the terminal, something that we're not gonna have is auto completion. So this is something which is still missing and I don't think it's going to come anytime soon, but basically auto completion inside the terminal that will make basically the terminal a full fledged IDE. But just, I just wanted to make sure that you're not expecting it. So now that we are here, now I'm going to utilize a leverage AI for me to create a controller. So now what I want to do is I'm ask my AI to create a CRUD operation for me. So I'm going to say create a new controller, which have a CRUD to create, to manage user, to manage just say usernames. Something like that, something quite simple. So now we can see here, it's telling me that it needs to create a user. I'm just gonna say yes. So now if I come here, we can see that I have my code available for me. If I go back here, we can see it did not add it this time. So what I can do, I can create, for example, my models folder and I can create a new class. I'm gonna call it username.cs. And I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this one, copy it and add it directly into my source code. And that's how I have my model. Now what I can say, from the user model, create the CRUD controller. So now we can see it's creating my services to manage the in-memory database that I want. I can see it all here. And I can go through that in order for me to create everything that I need. I'm not gonna go do it in step by step. So what I'm gonna do is I just updated my full CRUD operation with a new controller. It's a pretty simple controller which stores user information inside a list that exists inside my controller itself. It's an in-memory list. And we can see here I have all of the CRUD, get all, get by ID, update, delete, etc. etc. So it's a very simple CRUD operation. So now what I wanna do is I wanna leverage the capabilities from Vision Warp. And this is going to be how we can actually do CRUD operations. So normally what we can do is we can have curls command. So if you don't know what curl is, curl is a basically a way where we can actually call a web API. So within normally, if we're using an 8, where Swagger is still built in into it, we can just go to the interface with the Swagger and then basically from there call our endpoint. Another way to do that is by actually curling. And we're going to see a simple curl command. So right now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run my application. So now that I run my application, what I'm going to do simply is I'm going to go back to my web browser and I'm going to refresh. And all I'm going to see here is basically I have my user API, I have my get, my post, and here get user by ID. I also have the get and the put and the delete and my normal weather forecast that I had before. So we can see here I have all of the endpoints. But because I don't have Swagger here, I, don't, I cannot really interact with it. So if in order for me to do, or if I want to get anything, for example, let's say I want to do a get for all users, I don't have any at the moment, but let's see if I want to do that. What I need to do is let me open a new terminal. So what I have here, basically I have a new window, but something cool with Warp is like if I go back, I can right click and I can say split pane to the right. And now I have another terminal directly embedded in it which it is in other, uh, in other uh, terms, I must say, but just, I know, just something that really interesting by having two at the same time here. So now that I have this in place, what I want to do is I want to do my curl command and it's quite simple to do a curl command. So I, all I need to do is I put curl and then I need to specify my HTTP. So all I need to do here is I'm gonna update my port. So this port has to be 5206. And now if I execute it, we can see I got an empty array because basically I did a call to my API. There's nothing there. I'm able to get it. And this is what I want to do. So right now here, what I have done is basically I create, I did my get command for all of my users, uh, but I don't want to type it every single time. And this is where warp drive came into place. So in order for me to actually have this, available for me to utilize as many times as I want. If we take a look here, I have something called like an icon with an arrow, it says save as workflow. So once I click on that, it basically stored it for me and tells me what do you want to call this workflow? I'm going to say it's, get all users and I'm just going to click on create. So now I can close this workflow and whenever I want to access it, what I can do is I can just go to the warp icon here on the left hand side, which is called warp drive. And I have my workflow that I just created. So in this way, it's allowed me to organize all of my commands. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it demo app because this is the app that we're currently working on. And I'm going to move this here inside my demo app. So as we can see here now, get all users is available for me. And now if I want to do it again or execute it, I can just click on it and it will automatically be populated inside my terminal. I can execute it. So here basically what I have is I have the capabilities to utilize the command from before. I can store them. So if I need to do any API testing, it's directly embedded into my terminal itself. I don't need to utilize any like 
retype the same command over and over again because I can directly utilize the terminal in order for me because those commands are already stored in my terminal I can directly use them from there and now what I want to do is I want to do a curl command in order for me to add a new user so I'm going to put curl and we can see it automatically start to help me populate it one thing here I would say is uh, the body of the request here is not right because it's not going to be name if we take a look at the request it's username so I'm just going to put here username and we can see here I got a confirmation and now what I can do here I can run again I can save it and we can see here it's telling me do you want to save it I'm going to say yes I'm going to say create user but something here that doesn't really see well because I don't want every single time to create a user I want to call it John what I want to do is I want to make this John or basically this value this uh, username is more of a variable so the way that I do that is I can delete it here and I can put double curly braces and I can call it username and once I do that we can see a dynamic argument has popped up I can say this is my username and I can click on create so now here what we have what we can see is we can only create new user has been created I can move it to my demo app and now whenever I want to reutilize this we can see it ask me what is the username that you want to input so in this case I'm just saying I'm going to put Muhammad and now once I run this we can see it Muhammad automatically updated the command stayed the same and we can see I'm directly able to utilize it even here with the logging I can see everything that once was shown and now Muhammad so now let's say I have two users and I want to get them back I can click on get all users executed and now we can see here I'm getting all of my users back and this way I'm able to store all of my CRUD operations directly inside my terminal without actually having to rely on a third-party service like let's say Postman or uh, Swag in order for me to do my API testing one last thing that I would like to also mention about warp is if we type on command p we can able to see here all of the different capabilities that exist I can change my theme I can check my workflows I can check my environment variable I can go to drive the session etc etc and for example if I want to search for a specific workflow let's say I have tons of workflow or hundreds of workflow I can just type workflows and you can see here it basically highlight all of the workflow which is available for me and I can search through them so I can say create and it will give me for example create workflow that I have I have another one to create a web API it's available also for me and basically by just simply clicking on this save as workflow command inside my terminal is really making me more productive and the one last thing that I want to mention about this here is because it's all block based so if you notice every single command is block based it's much more easier for me to navigate through my history and basically it allows me to get more access to what I need so for example instead of trying to scroll into a larger set of information what I can do as soon as I click on save as workflow I can directly access it from wherever I want so it has been a very quick introduction about warp why do you might need it as a dotnet developers how we can actually leverage it in order for us to make our life easier how we can use the built-in AIs and the warp drive just to make our day-to-day -day task much more faster and much more easier if you have any questions or clarifications please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buy me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day.